The Daily Gospel Network, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ every day. Join our featured ministry for happiness, healing, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us as we proclaim God's love and help you step into your season. Coming up on the Daily Gospel Network, Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. I do. Amen. Grace and peace to everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, welcome to Spreading Truth Ministry International. My name is Prophetess Dr. Keisha Capers Diaz, and I'm the founder and pastor and administrator of Spreading Truth Ministry, Spreading Truth Ministry International, and Spreading Truth Ministry House of God and Prayer for All People. Thank you so much for Daily uh, Gospel Network, for the platform to broadcast all around the world. I just want to bid everybody greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I feel so blessed to have the opportunity to be one of many churches and ministries and kingdom representatives to be featured. Amen. And it's a joy and a pleasure to serve. So listen, before we go into the broadcast, please take this time to follow us, Spreading Truth Ministry, on all our social media platforms. You'll find us on Instagram. You'll find us on Twitter. You'll find us on YouTube as well as Facebook. We're streaming right now um, on multiple broadcasts. Right now, we're streaming in, in three other broadcasts as we speak. And so you are welcome to share because sharing is key like this broadcast and please tell a friend tell a friend amen so now that we've gotten all of that out of the way let's go right into the word amen the word of God today we're going to discuss the state of our union the state of our union I think it's important. This is number one. It's November the 7th, 2020. I want you to write this in your calendar. It's already there, but I want you to, this is a very significant date. I need you to circle it. I need you to circle it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I need you to circle it because this date is extremely significant. It will be. It will be significant. You're going to look back on this day. Circle it. Hallelujah. Praise be to our God. Welcome to those that are streaming with me live. Thank you so much for tuning in and liking the broadcast, but we're trying to reach a broader audience. So I will uh, really, this is for everybody, but I really want everybody to hear. Amen. Hallelujah. What the spirit wants to say to the churches, to the people of God, where you got to have an ear to hear in this season is so important. Mm. Uh, I want to highlight that. I want to underline that. I want to underscore that. You know, if I could circle it, I would circle it. It's so important that we, the people of God, have an ear to hear during this season. We can't lean to our own understanding. Not in this season. Uh -uh. We, we shouldn't have done that in the past, but but definitely not in this season. You need, a, you need an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit, can somebody say Holy Spirit? Oh, yes, I'm talking right already. <laughs> what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. So today we're going to discuss the state of our union. Who is the our union? That is these United States of America. We're going to talk about the state of the United States and everything that's going on. So listen, we are in the process of finishing our election for those that have been hiding under a rock <laughs> and you may not know what's been going on with us, but we have been in a heated competition for years now. Um, <laughs> the electoral process begins through campaigning. And so for years, there's been campaigning going on for years. And so we are worn out as a nation because of ads, because of 
folks going on the campaign trails, going to city to city to state to state in the midst of a pandemic. You know, the pandemic started um, this year, even though it's, it's referenced as COVID-19 because the initial outbreak was noted um, in 2019. So it's, it's coined COVID-19 um, because that's when it started. But we're still having to deal in the midst of the campaigning, which has been going on for some years now. Uh, we've had to wrestle with the pandemic and everything that's associated with that, having to wrestle with that. So we are fatigued as a nation. Now, some people say we're vulnerable, but, you know, we have too many we have too many um, places all around the world militarily. So we're not vulnerable, but emotionally, we are. <laughs> emotionally, yes, yes, we are fatigued emotionally but as a nation we're strong as we've ever been uh as a nation we're, we're, we're strong as we've ever been but in terms of emotionally and, and just fatigue uh when it comes to our mental health yes absolutely we are vulnerable when it comes to because we're tired we've been fighting against many 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 different things if you've been keeping up if you've been keeping track you've noticed it you've seen it on the news for those that are international maybe you tune in to some of the youtubes even though you have to be careful with that you have to be careful what you watch because everything i know they coined the term fake news but not everything that uh, appears to be a uh, glitter is gold not everything that's being said is truth and some things that are truth are high have truth so you really do have to fact check this is the generation of fact check <laughs> you gotta fact check everything and so as a result, we just finished our election. Um, and so uh, if you don't know, now you know, um, uh, our, our Mr. Joe Biden is now the president elect. OK, uh, uh, yes. Campaign heavy. Former vice president of America uh, to uh, uh, Barack, Pre uh, former president Barack Obama. Uh, that Joe Biden. Amen. He is now the president elect. So we're going to need your prayers. You know why? You know why? Because we are a nation that is divided, even though a great majority came out and represented and they expressed their vote. Now, like I think unprecedented, this election was unprecedented because because of COVID, a lot of us had to go. Uh, we had to we didn't go to the polls per se, but we did vote. A lot of folks voted by way of absentee ballots, absentee ballots. And that's important because because of COVID, because of the restrictions, uh, you know, we couldn't have large gatherings um, and that sort of thing. We have to practice social distancing. And so we couldn't make it to the polls. Not all of us. We could not. And everyone just had a feeling that this would be a special kind of election, a special kind of election. So because of COVID, because of it being a special kind of election, it was an overwhelming turnout by absentee ballots. And so I think for the first time, if, if America hasn't felt um, the, the, the will of the people, I feel like that the, the will of the people, the majority of the people have been expressed by absentee ballots because now we can say these people went out of their way to mail these ballots, to drop them off, to make sure that their, that their uh, vote was heard, that they made their say in terms of who they would like to see to run the country, who would like, who they would like to see to be the next president of the United States. So as an overwhelming response, I want to say, now I'm not saying some of those battle states, it was close because of our electoral college and the way uh, the electoral system is set up. We have certain states that are referred to as the battleground states. But I want to say overall, the response was overwhelming and they heard the voice of the people. OK, they heard the voice voice of the people. And so as a result, there are a lot of people that are obviously crushed. Now, every time there is an election, it's very similar to a sport. You're going to have winners and you're going to have losers. People invest a lot in these candidates. They they sow into them by way of their donations. They uh, you know, they campaign for them. They have, you know, little campaign, uh, you know, uh, 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 logos and whatnot on their cars, signals on their cars, in their lawn. So we go hard um, for our presidents and the people that we represent. Represent if we choose to, and there are some that are, you know, secret uh, admirers, and they don't like to share who they're voting for. But nevertheless, the nation is indeed suffering right now in silence. Some of those that have lost or felt like they've lost, they're probably just keeping it to themselves. And then there are others that are more vocal out there uh, protesting the, the election because they think that it has been stolen. 
So our nation still has a strong majority who believe in the rhetoric, in the rhetoric that many have been saying in regards to our electoral process. Some people say that you know the votes are fake or the votes um, are are illegitimate votes. They 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 are being they're counting votes for everywhere. They didn't get in on time and that sort of thing. None of those things are true. One of the things I know 100% about our electoral process. Number one, because I've worked for the Board of Elections. Yes, I worked at the polls many years. It's just this time because of COVID, I did not volunteer to work this time. Um, but during that during that process, it's a very rigorous. It is very specific. Everything has to check with everything. For example, if you're in the system as a registered voter, they have to literally line your name up to your signature. And if it looks weird or suspect, they will have to question the vote. And so there's a rigorous process, even though there is a system by way they do cast their ballots, they're also looked at and they are scrutinized as they go. So there is a rigorous process. It's just not as simple as you think. There's a lot involved. Numbers are assigned and the whole bit. And so uh, a lot of people don't trust the process because people, there has been voter, voter fraud. There has been uh, voter suppression in the past uh, among certain groups. And so those things, that, that has been a reality. Those things have happened um, in our country. But I believe that because of this particular election being what it is, uh, they literally had cameras in their voting, especially in these battleground states. They've had media present and every polling um, up until always forever have had a, a representation for each party there on site. That is always their poll watchers. Um, and so we know that, we know that they're gonna be present. They just can't go around, you know, uh, being menacing and, you know, and that sort of thing and trying to influence people's votes, but they are present in the building. We know that we're trained to know that they're there. And so when they are present, we're made aware of their presence. And so, and also there is a bipartisan representation at the polls, workers at the polls are bipartisan. For example, if there's a table, there's a Democrat representative and then there's a Republican representative and there are times there, there's independent representatives and even Green Party representatives. So there's a bipartisan representation of workers at the polls. And what they do is they don't put two to two, they don't put two Democrats at one table. There's a bipartisan participation in the process. So if I worked the one table, it would be me and another Republican when I was Democrat. I'm no longer a Democrat. I'm an independent. But when I was a Democrat, it would be me and another Republican. Or if I was a Republican, it would be me and a Democrat. We would be sitting at the table, checking people in, making sure that they've registered and giving them information on how to go about, uh, you know, completing the process of voting. And so because of the rhetoric, people are going around and they are protesting. They are not happy with the results, but they are overwhelming overwhelming. He easily made uh, the required numbers to predict the outcome easily. But because of the rhetoric, and this rhetoric has been spewed <laughs> for months and months and months, conversation in regards to the election being stolen was discussed prior to the election coming to fruition. And so because of that rhetoric, it has put question marks in the mind and the heart of some of the American voters. And so as a result, they are upset. But the purpose for this, again, again, we're talking about the state of our union and the importance of understanding what our role is as kingdom citizens. And as a result, as kingdom citizens, it is our job to operate in the spirit of grace, in the spirit of grace as peacemakers. That's how they know that we are the children of God. And so I know, especially if your candidate was elected, it, it, it's, it's easy to fall in that attitude of, hey, I told you so, and to gloat and to, you know, just really rub it in the face of your neighbor. But I want to caution you that the enemy is really trying to seize an opportunity to further divide the world. Now, we know, we know what the Bible says. We you know, when they say peace and safety, then there's utter destructions. That's true and that's coming. But as of right now, we are still in transition. And I'll talk about that um, in just a moment. But when you consider, uh, again, 1 Corinthians 14 and 13, 33, 1 Corinthians 14, 33, talking about that God is not the author of confusion. 
Me, that's the first and foremost. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Um, in all the churches, all the churches of the saints, we need to understand that. <laughs> God is not the author of, of confusion. I know that there are people that have predicted the outcome of this presidency and what they said did not come to pass. Now, we know that, of course, there's, there's litigation right now. Right now, they're fighting against the process. But because of the numbers, it's going to be difficult unless somebody cheats. And it can be proven that it was indeed a cheat. I mean, without, without question. They're going to have to prove that. And so... Uh, the burden is on the Trump campaign. The burden is on the Trump campaign to prove that there was something fishy going on. The burden is on their campaign. And if they cannot prove that because of the overwhelming outcome of the numbers, see, that's one thing you cannot deny are the actual votes. And it can be proven exactly. They were date stamped. So they can be proven what date they, they came in. So right now there are some states that are going, they re, they're going through the process again to determine the outcome of each state. But the burden of proof is on the Trump campaign, believe it or not. And they're going to have to show without a shadow of doubt that that was the case. So for those, again, that predicted the outcome of another outcome and it didn't come to pass and you did not have, um, you know, a caveat with that prophecy, then you're going to have to re really go back to God and really inquire what happened with that. Because God is not the author of confusion, but of peace but of peace. So we have a job to do as peacemakers. So because there has been a lot of confusion in regards to this election, we have to make sure that we, the people of God, promote peace. We have to pursue after it and we have to foster peace. I know it's hard, but we can do it. Matthew 5 and 9, I think we've already uh, iterated on this. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Hebrews 12 and 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness. Come on. Without no man shall see the Lord. Second Thessalonians say three, uh, 3 and 16. I'm sorry. Second Thessalonians 3 and 16 says, now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. So again, God giving us peace, telling us to follow peace. And then he said that we're called the children of God because we are makers of peace. Come on, somebody. And so it is our kingdom obligation. huh? Hallelujah. To operate under the grace of peace. It is our it is our responsibility to facilitate it. It is our is our it is our responsibility to pursue after it. Amen. Amen. Because God has called us unto peace. Glory to God. Romans 12 and 18 said, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceable with all men. I know your peace <laughs> and your ability to make peace. Hallelujah. And foster peace is going to be tested. But the Bible says that if it's possible, if there be any realm of possibility, he wants you to make it happen. Mm. As much as life in you, if he be in you and he's the prince of peace, guess what? It's possible. It's possible to live peaceable with all men. First Peter 3 and 11 said, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Amen. So in this situation, in this circumstance, we have to pursue after peace. It's so important. It's crucial in this time. That's why I say you need to date stamp. You need to circle this on your calendar because as of today, you're going to, my God, seek peace and ensue it. Mm. Hallelujah. You're going to be makers of peace on your social media. I wish I had an amen. Glory to God. You're going to foster peace amongst your family. Mm. You're going to follow peace with all men and holiness without. No man shall see the Lord. Listen, it's imperative that you follow peace with all men. Hallelujah. Because if you don't do that, with holiness, hallelujah, that's a conjunction in addition to holiness, you will not see the Lord. That's why I say you all, it's crucial, hallelujah, in the state that we are in for us to pursue after peace. Mm. 
bless God. And, and, and so as I was scrolling on my social media, Lord have mercy, people just enjoying themselves. Amen. Amen. Just enjoying themselves. And I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. And then I see a comment that said something like this. It says, you know, it's something about, I don't know, I'm feeling some kind of way. I don't know. I feel like there's something going on in their spirit. You know, they, they have a sense of urgency or an alert in their spirit. And I responded to that comment with this. And I'll share it with you. I'll give you the exact quote because I think that it's important for us to know. Though we are celebrating for those that voted for this particular candidate that won, though we may be excited about the future, though we may be excited that the person that we don't like is in office, I want to caution you, my friends. <laughs> I want to caution you with this. First of all, I responded, I believe that the election should motivate us to pray the more. What do you say, sister? Mm. Though your candidate won, you shouldn't stop praying. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you should be motivated to pray the more. Why do you say you should not let your guards down? No, my friends, it is not over. It is just the beginning. Then I begin to indicate that that feeling is an indicator to stay spiritually alert to the warfare that is unseen. My God today. And I said, I dare not take my guard down as a result of this election, more warfare will ensue. We must be strategic in this hour. Ultimately, all roads, come on, regardless of who's elected, is leading down the path to the great tribulation. Now, if you don't know anything about me, know this. This ministry preaches and teaches in time ministries. We don't play games with this world system, not at all. We understand our position as the people of God. We are the salt of the earth. We have great impact in the taste of it. Now, we have the light in us that is the light of the world. Come on, somebody. We shouldn't be hidden under a bushel, but we should be seen. We're clear about God's objective in regards to our kingdom, which is the kingdom that is not of this world, citizenship and our position in the earth. The earth, hallelujah, it belongs to God. It said, he, he said, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the people that dwell therein. Then he also says at the world, this is not our world. We're not in this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world at the same time. And so we serve the maker of heaven and earth, but at the same time, we're truly not citizens of this world. As a matter of fact, the world hates us. I wish I had a witness. They can't stand, hallelujah, the representation of Jesus Christ in the earth. We'll get to that in just a few moments. So in this time, it's not time for us to, you know, get thrown off and get beside ourselves in celebration mode. But it's a time to be prayerful and strategic. Lord have mercy. Because ultimately all roads, it doesn't matter who we elect as president, uh-oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, because all the leaders of this world will have a part in the persecution of the church. I wish I had a couple of organs in a lane to run down. Hallelujah. So listen, don't get comfortable, my friends. Hallelujah. Brace yourself, church of the living God. Hallelujah. We got work to do. Listen, Biden's win is momentarily relief. It's a momentary relief for some. Mm. And, 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 and however, it's a fuel for others to reign terror. Don't you know that this current president has a cult following? Hallelujah. There are some people that are not rational. Lord have mercy in their thinking. And as a result, they're willing to do anything. What do you mean? Hallelujah. Let me give you some examples. Uh, during the protest, during the election process, we had some citizens that ran on people's lawns running down Joe Biden's picture and election stuff. Hallelujah. We have people threatening to kill folks on Twitter because Joe Biden won. Hallelujah. And certain people came out and spoke against what the president had said. So some people are not touched by the Holy Spirit. Some people are being ruled by another spirit. And that spirit is rage, anger. Hallelujah and hate, and they want to reign terror. My Lord have mercy 
on the people that voted contrary th than they did. Come on, that's real talk. Amen. If you've been noticing the news and the rhetoric of the things that have been said, it has emboldened certain groups in our community. So we need to be mindful. We need to be vigilant. We need to be strategic. And then I ended with, we must not get comfortable, but continue to watch and pray. Now listen, I didn't vote Republican. Hallelujah. I did not. But I'm not comfortable. Though I'm happy. Hallelujah for the candidate. And I'm happy. Hallelujah for the VP. I'm still not comfortable. Hallelujah. I don't want to take anything for granted and take things lightly. Because we have an enemy who is raging. Who is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And just like there's many Ministers of light, there's also ministers of darkness. So we have to be careful. Hallelujah. If, if, if. Uh, the Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, be careful for nothing. Mm. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known. And the peace of God, come on somebody, first it says, be careful for nothing. It's important that we do not let our guards down. Congratulate, as it should be. That's our electoral process. That's our democracy. One goes in, one goes out. It's the process. Uh, nothing personal. Uh, but people have taken it personal because they have a cult following. Uh, hallelujah. So it's personal for them. Uh, so we have to be careful. My, my, my. Uh, hallelujah. But in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Uh, and the peace of God, uh, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Uh, so it's so important that the peace of God Hallelujah. Keep us during this time. We have to let them in. Come on. But we also have to lead as peacemakers in the earth. Listen, James 3 and 18 says, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in the peace. Hallelujah. Of them that make peace. Glory to God. So when we make peace, we sow peace. Come on. Hallelujah. That is the fruit of our righteousness. I love Isaiah 26 and 3. This is my go-to. It doesn't matter what season it is. Glory to God. This is something that we should always be mindful of. Hallelujah. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. This is Isaiah 26 and 3. So it doesn't matter who wins the election. God is able to keep us in the state of peace. My God, and not just any peace, but a perfected state of peace. Hallelujah. How can he do that? Glory to God. Our minds have to be stayed on him. Hallelujah. And we have to trust in him. When we trust in him and our mind is fixated and concentrated, my, 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 on him, he'll keep us in a state of perfected peace. Now, let me share some thoughts with you in regards to the global reaction. Now, you may be a part of the global community that I'm going to shout out, but I want you to see this. And this comes from, uh, you know, a reputable, I would like to think a reputable, uh, uh, report of uh, the, the Rutherford's report, the bureaus, they compile, they compiled this and this was written by Francis Carey. Uh, so I'm going to give you the list of the congratulations by the world. Everybody's taking note. Mm. Everybody's watching. They're watching the process. They've watched the process and everybody is watching the response. Mm. We're being watched. Glory to God. And this is the response of the global leaders. In London, it says, uh, let's see, uh, it was reported that the Joe Biden captured the U.S. presidency on Saturday as voters... For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.